Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, back on the surface grinder project. Uh, I am overdue trying to get this thing put back together. Just have so much going on. This project has just drug on, but I really need to get the surface grinder going. So we're going to try to put the, uh, the whole transmission case back into the machine today. So if you haven't been following along in the series, we had an issue with the pulley on the back back here where it had gotten loose, it had worn the shaft down, it had worn the pulley down. We had to grind some diameter off of this shaft. We had to uh, make in a bushing to go inside the bore this out and put a bushing in the, the pulley itself to size it down correctly. I've got all that done now and we're ready to put it all back together and get this machine going. So. Let's get over here with the engine hoist, get this thing picked up, and uh, hopefully get her back in the machine without any too much trouble. I have the part slinged up over here, uh, just like we did before. It's just uh, choked around this thing, or not choked, but looped around it in two places, front and back, so hopefully we can pick it up rather evenly. And coming on up, I got a little piece of metal through here just to keep that strap from slipping back. There we go, we are up. Let's uh, move this thing around. Let's come down with it. Move in. All right, so this is where it gets tricky. Um, I need to kind of reposition this where my sling is uh, not up in the front so we can just kind of push it on up in there hopefully so let me think about how I'm going to do this I'll be right back well I got in here just kind of got my strap over off the front there um, I got to get it there's a little knob down here on the bottom or a piece coming out of the bottom I'm going to have to kind of get it over that and what I'm doing is I, I got it kind of tilted down so when I pick up on the back of this or the front of it I guess it is it loosens the sling up and it lets me kind of just come in here and ease it forward all right so this little casting on the bottom is catching so let's see if we can kind of get that up in there here we go This was a lot easier when there were two people help doing this. Slide this forward. All right, so what's happening right here is it's hitting on the top, but it's resting on the bottom. I think what I need to do is kind of tilt it back to get a flange on the bottom where it'll kind of go in and drop down. Hopefully the top will then go right in. There we go. Perfect. I know some of you guys are probably going to fuss at me for standing under this, but there's just really not any alternative right now and even if it were to fall right now I don't think it would go very far because the piece is up in there and I need to drop it down some and I think I can scoot it up in there a little bit farther now okay so we can go up in there a little bit more all right, so now I'm to the point where I think we're gonna drop the pressure down. It should stay up in there. Let's see what happens, yeah. I need to get my straps out of the way. All right, get this out of the way now. 
and hopefully take it in the rest of the way here. Let me go around the back side. It is dripping some oil out of the front. It's not level and the oil is still in there. I got you looking in the access hole back here in the back and you see right here, this is the uh, spindle that I worked on. It's, it made it through the hole just fine. Uh, what I got to do though is this little gear right back here has got to fit through this hole and it meshes up with the gear above it. So this is going to be a little bit challenging. Uh, I'm not going to be able to catch it on camera, but I'm going to have to get in here and just kind of, I guess, try to pick that front up and uh, get it through there and pull it forward. This is again a place where I could really use a second hand, but we'll see if we can get it by ourselves. But guys, I was in a situation where I needed to pick the front up and also have someone in the back to kind of pull it in, but since there was only one of me, I just used the engine hoist here to kind of pick the front up. So put a strap on the very front, got it where it was more or less in the plane that it needed to be, where the bolt holes would line up. And then I went around back and was able to uh, pick the back up and pull it in and get everything lined up back there. And I'll give you a peek from the back side as well, I'll show you what it looks like now. And here's a peek in the back. I, once we got that front lined up, I was able to come in here and just kind of pick the back up a little bit. See this little boss back here? It fits up real nice inside this uh, hole and that lines that gear right up. So I was just kind of able to come up here, pick it up and just pull it back and get it into place. Mission accomplished. Now I want to come in here and get my holes lined up and go ahead and put the uh, screws back in here to hold it in place. I'm going to leave it a little bit loose until I get them all in and get them all positioned. And I am putting brand new socket cap screws in here. If I remember, there was actually one of them was missing on this one. So we're replacing that one as well as putting a few new ones in here. Just make sure uh, everything's nice and clean and no problems. All right, and I'm going to tighten them all up. We're ready to start putting the insides back in. And the first piece that needs to go in is this oil pump that we had taken out. We had to take the pulley off of it as well. And um, it's just gonna fit down here in the bottom. Now there's a, a gasket uh, that goes down in here. And there's four screws. I've got a GoPro set up inside the machine here. So hopefully you guys will be able to kind of see what we're doing. So we'll start by uh, putting that gasket on there. Come in here with the pump. All right. That should be lined up right there. See if I can finger start this one. Get the other one started. And tighten them all down. You know what, I think I'm gonna actually leave these loose because when I put that belt on there, I need to be able to uh, pick pump up just a little bit to actually get the belt to slide over the pulley. So we'll tighten that up when it's left at the very end. So that's got a little bit of play in there, but it is on and it is positioned where it needs to go. The next piece to go in is gonna be this uh, assembly here. This is basically a counterweight and an idler pulley that keeps that belt tight on there. And I think you'll see how it works when you get in there, but the counterweight up here causes this piece to pivot, push down, and the belt kind of goes around this. This is a tightener. Now, this mounts on the area where the shaft comes through that we worked on, and there's actually uh, an oil seal that goes in here 
to protect, uh, or basically just keep any oil from coming out there. The original one actually had two oil seals back to back, and the oil seals that were in there were just completely shot. And we tried to find some exactly like the old ones, and ended up having to order these. And they're the same dimensions and same size. The only thing that I'm really not crazy about this is that the originals kind of, or at least one of them, had a shield on the back to kind of help protect stuff from getting in. Um, these don't. Um, I'll tell you what I may do is I may, I may put one in one way and one in the other way. Um, I think that'll probably work. But anyway, we need to get these installed. It's just a press fit that goes down inside this hole. So. Yeah, that's got the first one started. And I think I said, I think I'm gonna put this one in the other way just to give some protection on that end. So got the seal in there now. This piece is ready to go back in. There's three little screws there that hold this in place. I believe it's these screws right here. Yep. So let's uh, get this over and put in. So first things first, we kind of have to fish this into the machine. goes in just like that and now I need to get my holes here aligned I'm not exactly sure what position this was in I think it needs to rotate around this way a little bit Let's see if I can get a peek where those holes are okay so that's actually pretty close right there I think I got that one started I gotta just get these things tightened up now. So it's just not good access. I can't get my Allen wrench in there straight to them. So we'll just fiddle with these things until we get them tight. All right, one more. I think we got these uh, tight. Let me just go back around, make sure they're all good and tight. All right, that looks good. Okay. Okay, next piece to go in will be the pulley. So I'm gonna take my key and uh, get this in here. Now we'll come in with the pulley. Make sure, yeah, I can't see it. Y'all might've been able to see that with that camera up there. I'm in a blind spot. I can't see nothing. Try to reach in from the top access hole. See if I can help keep that key from moving around a little bit. I think I 
got it going up on there. I'm gonna get something to bump that in place. There we go. Here's the, the pulley that drives the belt. It had a similar problem where the bore inside here had worn down and I actually, I did it off camera, but we, we bored this out and put a bushing in here. Now this one turned out pretty easy. Uh, I think the, the, the shaft diameter was a half inch and I happened to have a bronze bushing that had a perfect half inch uh, diameter on the inside and it was three quarters of an inch, or it was made for a three quarter inch press fit on the outside. So it was basically a ready made bushing. Uh, so we put this in the lathe, I bored the inside just a little bit to get it true, and then I just used a drill and a reamer to get this thing to size and it just pressed right in. This was a really quick fix. Uh, then we drilled a hole through here, and retapped it for a set screw. The set screw will keep it from spinning, uh, the bushing from spinning. So anyway, this will go in here, let me, uh, yeah, there's a flat on that shaft down there that that set screw goes on. And shoot. You know what I'm gonna have to do guys? Is I think I'm gonna have to, yep. This pulley will not go on. It needed to go on before I put the dang pump in there. Dang it. All right. Well, let me uh, figure out what we're gonna do. We may have to backtrack here a little bit. All right, guys, so I had to do this, a couple of little adjustments here. We pulled the pulley back out, the main pulley back out so that I could get access down to the oil pump. And I had to basically pull it back out. I had to put the pulley on and then put it back into the machine uh, just to get it installed. It would not fit on that shaft otherwise. And while I'm in here, I'm remembering, I forgot something else that was pretty important. There's an oil line in here. I don't know if y'all can see that in the GoPro or not, but there's an oil line that goes into the oil pump and uh, it's kind of important that we put that in there. Otherwise, it'd just be pumping oil out into the bottom of the machine instead of into all the important parts. So anyway, let's uh, get that put back in there. All right, well, we've got it, the thread started. Now it's just a matter of tightening it up. Turn at a time here. Eighth of a turn at a time. All right, I think we have the oil line back on like it needs to be. I wanna get in here and make sure that pulley is tight. Um, I did put Loctite on the set screw. All right, that's on there good and tight. All right, so now I'm gonna come back in and put the main pulley back on. Uh, start out by getting my set screw back in there again, or my, excuse me, my key. And uh, all right, that's all the way back on there. So now we'll put our set screw back in this one and I'm putting some fresh Lock tight back on there again since we took it out. Let's see if I can get in here with this uh, T handled wrench. And that ain't gonna work. With the set screw or with an Allen wrench and tighten that set screw up good and tight. And let's do this belt again. So I put a rod in here to kind of hold that counter right up out of my way while I was working down on that pump. So get it around the bottom. like a contortionist trying to do this. All right, 
that's got that back installed again my main drive pulley and belt and now let's try to get our v-belt back on this one's going to be a bit of a pain i remember this thing was really really tight coming off maybe i can get it back on i think we got all this uh Workings back here, put back together. The main belt's working. I have the oil pump back on. Everything's lined up. I think we got it. So we're back around to the front of the machine and next thing I need to do is get my linkage set up. So this is a link that basically allows us to have a switch out here in the front panel that turns uh, or engages the automatic feed. And this basically goes up here and connects in here. Yeah. All right, I think that's on there now. And there's this pin that goes in the front that screws into that hole and that should hold it all together so we tighten that up all right all right so with that link is now engaged uh, when you flip this lever on the front it makes the table feed in or feed out depending on which uh, position you have it in so anyway that is back together. Let's get our front, front panel on. And we're getting into short rows here. So we're moving right along. And next we need to put in our little control panel here where we can uh, control what's going on with everything. And that's basically this piece here. And let's see here. Um, turn this piece up. There we go. So this uh, little piece here fits up inside the fork and that's what's gonna turn it on and off, allow it to engage and disengage. There's some lockout features in here so that things can't happen while other things are going on. Uh, but this piece up here fits into a, uh, a little cog that we gotta line up but it's basically just fits right in there. So let me uh, get these screws started and then we'll make sure everything's lined up and working right. All right, so we got our control panel back on here. That should disengage that. That engages the feed. It's like it's all set up. All right, let's uh, see what we need to do next. The machine is back together. I have no leftover parts. It's always a good sign. So uh, moment of truth. Uh, let's see if this automatic feed is back to working. So keep the spindle on. I'd already hand spun it to do all that. Uh, manual's working. And, all right, let's see what happens. Pull this lever up and it should go to working. Oh, got to pull that out. Look at that. We are back in business. That looks good. All right. Flip it the other way. I think we are good to go. So, mission accomplished. 
Got the surface grinder automatic feed back together. That was the problem. You know, after going through all that in the back of your mind, you're kind of wondering, well, was that really the problem or was it something else? But uh, evidently we were right on track with our repair. So uh, looks good. So now what are we gonna do? I am going to, while I have the surface grinder out from the wall, uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of time. I'm gonna give this thing a good cleanup. Uh, just get all the grime and stuff off of it. I've done that previously, but this thing just makes a lot of dust. So we're gonna give it a good cleaning. And I think I'm also gonna do a little bit of uh, electrical work. We got our magnetic chuck. The, there's a little rectifier in here to create direct current. And I think what I'm gonna do is, I was looking at this earlier, is I'm gonna move that um, rectifier over here into the electrical cabinet. Uh, there's just really no reason. It'll fit in the electrical cabinet, unlike the old rectifier that was on this thing that was just huge. So uh, I'm going to move it into the electrical cabinet and get all that working and do some rewiring on it while I got it out as well. And uh, I think that's probably about it. So after that, I need to get it and put it back over where it goes, get it properly leveled up, and we should be back to grinding on this machine uh, uh, without too much more work. So good job. <laughs> I'm tickled, this is, this is exactly what we needed to get done on this. We need to get this, I've been needing to get this done for a while now, so we are back in business. So with that, that's gonna be a wrap on this video. So as always, thanks for watching guys. And uh, if you haven't already, leave some, please, please subscribe to the channel, leave some comments, all that good stuff. We'll talk to you next time.